Well, I think this, if you look historically, that women have never truly been safe. We know that we're vulnerable to the world, to men, to different things. Now, it, it's changed to some degrees. We have more freedoms, but there is that sense of how safe are we? So, you know, for example, if you're walking in a, in a dark street, you know, you, you might feel a little more anxious. Uh, and, and feeling safe within oneself means that you're vulnerable, you're not all closed up, but you also feel confident in yourself, you know? So it's, it's, it's a very big issue, I think, for women today. And uh, we see it very often on the, in the aspects of uh, being vulnerable when it comes to our face and our body and going into treatments, especially when uh, we hear so much about what can go wrong and uh, see examples of things that are not mm -hmm. looking so great. Mm -hmm. And that's where they are very often out of proportion. So they are the things that out are there to intimidate, intimidate us. And uh, then taking action despite knowing that that can go wrong, it already creates a bit of tension. So then reassurance from the environment or from the person or from the doctor or from the practitioner who delivered the treatment has to come in place because otherwise a person is left with this unknown that they really don't, yeah, they don't know what, where they're going to go with the treatment, so how it's going to happen and what's the final effects going to be. Right, and I think this gets back to realistic expectations. Yeah. Because if you have unrealistic expectations, you might think that your practitioner is going to, to, to you're more vulnerable, you're actually less safe. Mm -hmm. Because then your practitioner may do things that aren't appropriate. So it's very important yeah. to have realistic expectations about treatment and find a practitioner who will make you feel safe, that you know is not going to give too much or too little, but be just right so that you end up looking really good. It's really interesting what you said in terms of a uh, link between uh, um, expectations or having unrealistic expectations and being vulnerable mm -hmm. because then if that's that what is happening in us if we want something very much we then don't use common sense in the right. process we don't have a choice almost we then take every, whatever it's, it's, it's given exactly and in yeah. if on other hand on other side we have person who is not honest or does it for wrong reasons, we then very easily manipulated in that place. Right, this is why I think you see sort of almost grotesque manipulations of the yeah. vulnerable woman, yeah. or male, but particularly women, where the practitioner has taken advantage of unrealistic expectations yeah. and actually been pushed into giving more treatment than it's appropriate. That's why it's so important at Clinic B to really understand what the treatments will deliver, give a good assessment, and, and, and really want the best for the patient, realistically. Yeah. I think that's the reason why there was, a, not to think, it, it is the reason why we created a very in-depth consultation yeah, process where we uh, go to the process of assessment in terms of personal uh, issues or like seeing where how they see themselves and what they are concerned about and then the second part it's discussion about where they want to take it because one person a little improvement it's fine and they don't and they are happy with this for another it's much more that they want to achieve and then we come in place to discuss what can be done, how long is going to take, what are the ways to achieve it, how much is going to cost, what what the process, how the process is going to look like. And uh, it is very difficult for, for, for the practitioner to have this conversation because unfortunately not many people want to hear or want to accept certain things and uh, 
and are comfortable about it, talking about this. So it's a very sensitive subject, but it's crucial in terms of the journey, in terms of the use of aesthetic treatments. Very true, because let's face it, there are so many practitioners. Every, I mean, you can walk along at the mm -hmm. high street anywhere, and you know, how do you know what you're getting? Yeah. You know, and things can and do go wrong. So feeling safe with your practitioner, I think is fundamentally important and has to do with your vulnerability, your expectations and the expertise of the practitioner. Do you think that uh, the mindset in that place uh, have a, plays a role in the results of the treatment? If it's because I've noticed it very often that people who are very nervous or have almost want something to go wrong because they're so afraid, so yeah, they might not something big might not happen, but very often I can sense it, and either we stop the treatment or we say okay, put it off for another day, or yes, there will be a bruise, there will be something more than, or the results not be not as good as for person who comes and it's relaxing that place. Well, obviously the, the mindset plays an important role. That's why I think in the assessment and the discussion of treatment, uh, it's so important to get the patient on board, get the person on board so they understand. Mm. Because I think it's a very fearful thing. Even though it's so modern mm. and so many people do, we realize there is a safety issue for yeah. women getting procedures. That's why the most important thing is read up on the information, yeah. find a practitioner that you can talk to and really trust, and also who's going to give you realistic results. I think that's, that's a great combination. And that's Dr. Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that here, everybody who experienced it here can confirm it, but that's what we strive for and that's what we want. We just. The most important is the relationship, it's a journey. It's not about the treatment, it's about the process. And hopefully that's what we deliver. I agree. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.